design of Terrifying Mutant requires the combined effort of three special ability users to tackle. To ensure absolute success, I had to call in two helpers. Chun Lei was already restless at home and arrived early at the riverside to wait. Seeing me approach, Chun Lei hurriedly waved. I am somewhat helpless regarding Chun Lei. We agreed to meet at 8, but he called at 6 to say he had arrived. I reached for the snow off-road vehicle and said, Get in the car quickly. Have you been freezing here all this time? After I turned on the heating, Chun Lei immediately relaxed and asked, You mentioned yesterday about going to save someone. Is that person a relative or a friend? She must be very important to you. I thought to myself that Yang Xinxin's computer skills are indeed very important to me now. But before I could respond, Chun Lei started his non-stop chatter, seemingly wanting to recount every trivial event of his life. Su Lily from our village must be secretly in love with me. The way she looks at me is different from others, probably because I saved her father last time. She thinks I am a man worth entrusting her life to. She must have a secret crush on me. But Su Lily is shy and doesn't dare to confess. Do you think I should make a move? I was exasperated. If it weren't for this guy's usefulness, I would have wanted to kick him out of the car. I quickly changed the subject. What do the people in your village think of me now? I asked intentionally. Sure enough, Chun Lei suddenly fell silent, his face turning complex. He hesitated for a long time without a clear answer. I thought to myself that I had nearly wiped out half of the young and middle-aged population of his village. The villagers must absolutely despise me. If it weren't for the fear of my power, they would definitely seek revenge. These were words Chun Lei obviously couldn't say, and my ears were finally at peace. Soon, a snowmobile appeared ahead. I hurriedly got out of the car to greet him. Uncle Yu, you look in great spirits. Seems like you and Joe Jaime are living quite comfortably. Uncle Yu raised his hand and said, I also feel a huge change in my body. My physical and mental strength is even stronger than when I was 20. After some pleasantries, I introduced the two to each other. Surprisingly, all three of them turned out to be individuals with special abilities. In this early stage of the apocalypse, having even one awakened person was already a rarity, let alone three. Uncle Yu couldn't help but ask, what kind of opponent requires the combined effort of three of us with special abilities? I gestured for them not to worry, explaining, we're just going to a school to rescue a female student. I managed to contact her yesterday. She's currently at Azure Sky Academy. However, something's off there. I think I heard mutant creatures. To ensure absolute success, I called you two to join me. Chun Lei immediately caught on to a key point. Mutant creatures, not mutated humans. I looked at them seriously and said, who said only humans can mutate? With the diversity of species in Heavenly Sea City and the presence of various pets and seafood like fish and crabs in the market, any cellular organism has the potential to mutate. Uncle Yu expressed his doubts. Do you know what it is? Something even you can't handle? I reassured them. There's no need to be overly worried. Based on the sounds I heard on the phone yesterday, this mutant is not human. Even if it's a mutated human, it would likely be in a frenzied state. Those kinds of sounds couldn't possibly be made by a normal human's vocal cords. However, with the three of us teaming up, no matter what kind of terrifying creature it is, it won't be able to harm us. With that, the three of us drove towards Azure Sky Academy. Meanwhile, at Azure Sky Academy, thick snow had already covered the entire campus, with only the rooftops of some tall buildings visible. In the gymnasium, a group of surviving students were exhausted from the continuous encounter with a terrifying monster. Some started to blame Yang Xinxin, who was in a wheelchair. More and more students are dying. Why are you, the cripple, still alive and well? The terrifying creature appeared unpredictably, and the teacher who had been protecting them always took special care of Yang Xinxin. Gradually, all the students started to see her as a burden, even blaming her for the deaths of their classmates. A female student, in despair, exclaimed, Do we even have a chance to survive? From over a hundred survivors, after the snow disaster, only about 40 remained. Counting the names of their departed classmates, everyone felt an unbearable chill in their hearts. At this moment, a girl with big wavy hair caught sight of Yang Xinxin in her wheelchair, and a strong sense of disgust arose within her. Why have so many died? Yet this crippled waist remains unharmed, she yelled, pointing at Yang Xinxin. Because teacher Liang was particularly affectionate towards Yang Xinxin, always ensuring she was taken along during every escape, the others saw this as an opportunity to vent their frustrations. Yang Xinxin quickly became the target of everyone's resentment. Some even suggested throwing her out to feed the monsters. Although they realized that even if Yang Xinxin died, the monsters would not spare them. They thought that if the monsters appeared again, leaving her behind to attract them could at least give her sacrifice some meaning. The class monitor, feeling helpless, said, Everyone, please stop. Teacher Liang cares for each of us equally, and always hesitates to leave anyone behind. But still, more and more of us are dying. Even if Yang Xinxin dies, how can you be sure that you won't be the next one? A girl with a ponytail stepped out from the crowd, a strange smile on her face. She walked up to Yang Xinxin, looking down at her. Yang Xinxin, seemingly frightened of this person, stuttered, Zhang Mingning, what do you want to do? Zhang Mingning leaned down with a venomous look in her eyes, and said to Yang Xinxin, you crippled waste, just go die, stop dragging us down. Yang Xinxin was stunned by this scene, her eyes wide in bewilderment, and tears uncontrollably started to flow. Instead of stepping into condemn Zhang 
welcoming me. The crowd around them began clapping and cheering. At this moment, a short-haired girl quickly stood in front of Yang Xinxin. She was Yang Xinxin's best friend, Lu Karen, who had been pushing Yang Xinxin's wheelchair all this time. Zhang Mingning, we are all classmates. Don't go too far. Zhang Mingning, however, laughed wildly and pointed accusingly at Lu Karen. What are you? Someone who got in through connections doesn't deserve to talk to me. Lu Karen, infuriated, retorted, at a time like this, your family's money is just worthless paper. Where do you get your sense of superiority from? This only angered Zhang Mingning further, who snapped back. Shut up. No matter what, you lowly people don't have the right to talk back to me. She then turned her fury back to Yang Xinxin. You cripple. It's because of a burden like you that we lost so many classmates. You might as well end it yourself. Yang Xinxin kept her head low, silent under the vicious curses of her classmates. Lu Karen continued to argue. Yang Xinxin is a human too. She has the right to live. The deaths of the other students have nothing to do with her. A girl with an innocent look then slowly spoke up. Her disability does indeed make her a burden for everyone, so Zhang Mingning does have a point. The students began to argue among themselves again, some even accusing Yang Xinxin of morally blackmailing them because of her disability. Really, a pitiful woman. We've been dragging this dead weight for so long. It's about time you found a place to die. Hearing this, Lu Karen angrily countered, I have been the one taking care of Yang Xinxin all this time. None of you have done anything for her. What right do you have to blame her? Zhang Mingning mockingly said, at least Yang Xinxin is a distinguished young lady from a prominent family. You are just a student who got in through connections. If it weren't for her disability, she wouldn't even bother with someone like you. She's just using you to satisfy her twisted sense of superiority. Lu Karen retorted, Yang Xinxin is not like what you think. Meanwhile, Yang Xinxin remained silent, her head bowed, as the incessant accusations gave her a splitting headache and tears continued to flow. At that moment, a girl with delicate features stepped forward from the crowd. Let's all say less. At a time like this, we should be more united and help each other. Shin Yauka, the class committee secretary from a distinguished family, said, although you are indeed a bit of trouble, we will not abandon you. I hope you won't hold a grudge against everyone. Let's continue to be friends. She extended her right hand sincerely. Suddenly, there was a loud clang. A metal window was pushed down from above, and a monstrous hand, several meters long, reached in through the window. The claw grabbed a student's head and easily lifted him up. The gymnasium erupted in screams of terror. Everyone desperately ran towards the back of the gym. Before the student could cry for help, he was swiftly pulled out of the window. The creature, a large cat-like beast, licked its blood-red tongue and then put the student in its mouth. Everyone was petrified, running for their lives towards the back of the gym, leaving Yang Xinxin behind, with only Lu Karen struggling to push her wheelchair. When they reached the back door, they found it frozen shut, impossible to open. Some students were so anxious they wet themselves. Everyone's face turned pale with fear. The beast, now inside the gym, played with the male student in its mouth before biting off his head with a crunch. The girls, witnessing this scene, were completely stunned and collapsed to the ground. The beast threw the remains aside and roared menacingly at the crowd, as if sizing up its prey. The students realized that the creature before them was a highly intelligent monster. It had taken the opportunity to attack them while the teacher protecting them had gone to find food. All the students were cornered in one part of the gym, too scared to fight back. Suddenly, someone unexpectedly pushed Yang Xinxin's wheelchair out into the open. Caught off guard, Yang Xinxin fell to the ground. Lu Karen wanted to help her up, but was paralyzed with fear and unable to move. The big cat-like creature was indeed attracted by this action and slowly approached Yang Xinxin. The student who had pushed her wheelchair, seeing an opportunity, tried to run towards the door. However, the creature, having observed everything, revealed a mocking smile and swiftly swatted the fleeing student with its paw, causing severe internal injuries with what seemed like a gentle strike. This student, born into a prominent family, had always been seen as a winner in life, but now faced a tragic and sudden end. Barely alive, he called for help but no one dared to come forward. Lu Karen, mustering her courage, went to help Yang Xinxin up. The others realized that while Li Yong had tried to run and was killed, Yang Xinxin, who appeared to be lying still, had survived the attack. It seemed the monster targeted moving objects first. Knowing they couldn't just play dead, the students decided they had to alert teacher Liang to come back, or they would all perish. While the creature was preoccupied with Li Yong, not killing him outright, but playing with him like a toy, the class monitor instructed everyone to scatter and run. However, just as they were about to seize the opportunity to escape, the dying Li Yong, seeing everyone abandoning him, cried out in despair, they are here, they are trying to run. Then, with a spiteful roar, he yelled, if I'm going to die, you're all going down with me. The sudden shout from Li Yong indeed caught the big cat's attention. It swiftly turned and knocked down two more boys. Li Yong, with blood in his mouth, laughed maniacally, if I have to die, we all die together, you all will be my funeral companions. While the big cat was distracted by these two groups, the class monitor, along with two others, dashed out of the gymnasium. Their faces were filled with relief, having narrowly escaped death. The two accompanying the class monitor complimented him, it's all thanks to your smart strategy of letting others distract the creature, giving us a chance to escape. The class monitor, while running, explained,
explained, I noticed that the creature seemed to be a mutated cat. Cats play with their prey before eating, and unless they are extremely hungry, they aren't much interested in dead prey. Seeing the class monitor escape, other students also tried to flee. However, the big cat's tail, over 10 meters long, whipped out with a loud crack, brutally striking one of them. Several girls collapsed an emotional breakdown, screaming in pain and terror. Just then, an angry shout resonated, you damned wild cat, don't harm my students. Hearing this, the students who had lost all hope suddenly saw a glimmer of light. It was Teacher Liang. Teacher Liang had finally returned, wielding an ancient longsword and charging fearlessly towards the big cat. The cat let out a piercing screech, dodging her attack. Teacher Liang's eyes filled with immense sorrow upon seeing the bodies of the students, but considering the safety of those still inside the gymnasium, she decided to lure the creature outside to avoid further casualties. Teacher Liang was a top-level swordmaster, having served as a personal bodyguard to a leader's wife, and her strength had only increased after awakening her special abilities. As a specially appointed teacher at Azure Sky Academy, she had voluntarily taken on the responsibility of protecting the students. The big cat seemed to understand Liang Yu's intent and, grabbing the body of a student in its jaws, quickly disappeared outside the gymnasium. Holding her sword with both hands, Liang Yu cautiously walked towards the door, well aware of the big cat's intelligence and the need not to underestimate it. Stepping outside, she found that the creature had vanished, leaving only a chaotic trail of massive footprints. It seemed to have moved away, and Liang Yu couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief, though a wave of indescribable exhaustion washed over her. In the two months since the apocalypse began, more than half of the students had died. If not for her fortuitous awakening of special abilities, she would have lost this deadly game of cat and mouse long ago, and everyone, including herself, would have been dead. Liang Yu threw the hard-earned food in front of the students. Class monitor, please divide the food, she said, then found a corner to sit down wearily. She was extremely tired. The majority of the school had perished since the apocalypse and she had been protecting the surviving students from monster attacks while also fetching food from the school's warehouse. The strain had taken its toll. At this moment, Zhang Mingning lashed out at Yang Xinxin again. Why are you still alive? You're the most useless one here. Liu Karen stepped up once more, indignantly responding, Can you please be reasonable? What does the monster attack have to do with Yang Xinxin? But Zhang Mingning was relentless. I just can't stand her. The cripple. What about it? Shen Miaoka tried to calm things down. Let's all say less. She suggested, taking a portion of the food to give to Yang Xinxin. But before she could hand it over, Zhang Mingning knocked it to the ground and snapped viciously, giving her food is a waste. The school's food supply is limited. This cripple will be eaten by the monsters sooner or later anyway. It's better to save the food for the rest of us. Teacher Liang Yu, who had been resting with her eyes closed, slowly opened them. She had become accustomed to the conflicts among the students and was too exhausted to deal with these trivial matters. As long as there was no loss of life, she had to conserve her energy to focus on the mutated big cat. Suddenly, a girl, overwhelmed with despair, screamed screamed, stop arguing, it's all pointless, I've realized we're all going to die, we're just food that the monster is keeping, it comes periodically to pick a few of us to eat, never killing too many at once because it prefers its prey alive, there's no hope left in this world, and no rescue is coming, the class monitor looked at the food in her hand, I don't believe it, there must be hope, we are the future elites of society, we won't just die here, he looked at the snow covered rooftops, if we can just contact the outside world, my dad will surely send someone to rescue us, at that moment, the sound of a car engine broke the silence, the three special ability users, following the navigation, had finally arrived at Azure Sky Academy after an hour. As I got out of the car, I drew my pistol, reminding the others to stay alert. Uncle Yu, a former soldier and the eldest of the three, felt it was his duty to protect the others. He stood at the forefront, his physique the strongest among them, but faced with the snow-covered campus, it was impossible to determine where the person they were supposed to rescue was. I tried contacting Yang Xinxin on my phone, but there was no signal. Then, I suggested to the others, this school spans 3,000 acres. According to the 3D map, there should still be high-rise buildings visible above the snow. Let's get back in the car and search slowly. Uncle Yu's suggestion to split up for efficiency was met with my caution. There's no need to rush. I shook my head. She survived two months already. A little longer won't hurt. It's safer for us to stay together. We continued to search the area by car and soon discovered a visible spire, likely the school's astronomy center, which was some distance from the cafeteria and dormitories. Chun Lei speculated they're probably hiding in a lecture hall or gymnasium. Those places Places are more spacious and have enough oxygen. Plus, there's the risk of snow collapsing the roofs. I pondered. During the call, there was mention of a gymnasium and cafeteria, but this campus is huge, with several cafeterias and gymnasiums. The search might be quite challenging. While I was deep in thought, Chun Lei excitedly shouted, John, over here, we might be able to get in. He used his abilities to clear the observatory's skylight and then crawled inside. John, there's a lot of astronomical equipment here. Should we collect it? I was somewhat exasperated. We're here to rescue people, not collect supplies. But since we're here, we might as well store it in my extra-dimensional space. Chun Lei, encouraged, worked with Uncle Yu 
you to enter through the window. Just then, I felt a sudden chill behind me, like being watched by a beast. I immediately raised my gun, ready for combat. A giant creature, over 10 meters tall, appeared on the snowy field, its eyes fixed on me, seemingly ready to pounce at any moment. We stood off for several seconds, but I didn't sense any intent to kill from it. In the midst of my contemplation, Chun Lei and Uncle Yu emerged from the snow, intending to ask me for some ropes to access the observatory. Chun Lei, upon seeing the monstrous creature, instinctively unleashed his ice-based abilities. Countless ice spikes formed and hurtled towards the creature. My attempt to stop him was too late. The snow was Chun Lei's element, and his attack was swift and decisive. The ice spikes hit the creature, eliciting a pained screech. Enraged, the creature lunged at Chun Lei with incredible speed, belying its massive size. I immediately activated my abilities, covering my body in a protective layer and enhancing my speed. Leaping into the air, I fired three shots at the creature's head with my gun. Surprisingly, the bullets, even armor-piercing ones, barely did any damage, sparking off its hide. As the creature neared Chun Lei, Uncle Yu stepped forward, his body radiating a golden light as his muscles expanded, transforming him into a towering figure. He delivered a powerful punch to the creature's head, causing the ice beneath him to crack. The beast's head twisted almost 90 degrees, and it staggered back, letting out a pain me out. Realizing we were dealing with a mutated giant cat, I switched to a sniper rifle. The creature's defense was extraordinary, its fur-like steel spikes, rendering the handgun ineffective. The beast, having taken a punch from Uncle Yu, turned and charged at me. I raised my sniper rifle and fired. The creature, sensing danger, couldn't dodge fast enough and was hit squarely on the cheek. Now thoroughly enraged, the creature's killing intent surged, and it slowly approached me with a twisted expression. Then, unexpectedly, it curled into a massive ball and rolled towards me at high speed. Stunned by this unexpected move, I couldn't help but exclaim in shock, what in the world is this tactic? As the mutated cat charged towards me with incredible speed, I quickly opened a dimensional portal, intending to trap it in my extra-dimensional space where even the mightiest would be worn down by the static world inside. However, I underestimated the creature's acute sense of danger. It detected the threat and, with a swift jump, evaded my attack, then darted towards a snow pile, leaving behind several dark holes in the snow. Chun Lei and Uncle Yu hurried over. John, are you alright? I raised my sniper rifle, keeping an eye on the cat. This creature is cunning. Be careful. Suddenly, the cat let out a few piercing cries, sounding almost like cursing, laden with a high degree of animosity. Uncle Yu, slightly bewildered, remarked, this beast seems to be cursing, and it's the kind with a high fuck content. The three of them were speechless. Then, they saw the big cat turn around, wiggle its butt, and it disappeared right into the snow. How did it vanish so suddenly? Uncle Yu wondered aloud. Chun Lei, equally astonished, speculated, could this creature possess space-related abilities too? I lowered my sniper rifle thoughtfully. Unlikely, if it had space abilities, it would have used them earlier. I'm also very sensitive to spatial fluctuations. It seems the cat just ran away. Approaching the spot where the cat disappeared, we realized it had burrowed into the ground. Chun Lei, looking serious, said, it seems the person we're trying to rescue encountered this creature, but it's strong and seemingly intelligent. How did ordinary people survive until now? John, are you sure about your information? My contemplation was deepened by Chun Lei's analysis. Even as a special ability user, he had nearly been overpowered by the creature. Considering its massive size and the consequent amount of food it would require, it seemed unlikely it could have survived this long by solely preying on the people at the school. But there's a puzzling detail. The creature didn't show hostility at first. It was provoked by your ice attack. It seems its intelligence has evolved, possibly to a level comparable to humans. We looked at the large burrows, speculating, perhaps these tunnels are what allowed air circulation underground, enabling survivors to avoid suffocation. With this in mind, I stood up. Let's go down and check. Chun Lei was alarmed. Go down there? That's its territory. I looked at him with a hint of disdain. Aren't you a nice ability user? Snow is your element. If that cat dares attack, just use your powers to bury it alive. Chun Lei, embarrassed, replied, right, I forgot about my abilities. We then jumped down into the cavern, finding an extensive network of tunnels under the snow, suggesting the creature had indeed been living there for a long time. With the complex network of tunnels, Chun Lei worried about getting lost, but I took out a box of colored pencils to mark our path. Uncle Yu sniffed a faint scent of blood. This must be the smell from that creature. Chun Lei, hesitant again, suggested, let's search in areas with less of that smell. I rolled my eyes at him. If you're scared, go back. We're three ability users. There's nothing to fear. If we encounter it, it's likely to be the one running away. I then took out a gleaming golden pistol, a Desert Eagle, one of the most powerful handguns in the world, and loaded it with ammunition. Uncle Yu, the veteran, recognized it at a glance. This is the famous Desert Eagle, one of the most powerful handguns in the world today. Its lethality is almost ten times that of a regular police handgun. This is a limited edition, custom ordered by Wang Siming for a hefty price. Its kinetic energy is comparable to a sniper rifle. Uncle Yu, your tracking skills are strong. Let's follow the scent of blood. If it's hunting, it will be near living people. Finding it should lead us to the location of the survivors. At this moment, Chun Lei still had a face full of fear.
fear. The power of his special ability did not make his courage any bigger. I looked at this timid fat man with a look of contempt. Stand at the back then. What are you afraid of? If we do encounter it, just use your ice abilities to trap it. We'll handle the rest. But we need to gauge its intentions first. If it remains passive, fine. If it attacks, we take it down without hesitation. My words seemed to reassure Chun Lei a bit. Meanwhile, inside the gymnasium of Azure Sky Academy, Liang Yu had been vigilantly guarding the students for three days and nights, wary of another attack by the giant cat. Aware that the creature was lurking nearby, she knew that leaving her post would expose her students to imminent danger. Pushed to her physical limits after three days without food, she realized that they couldn't continue this way. Starvation posed a greater threat than the creature itself. While she was deep in thought, the class monitor and Shen Yauka approached her. Teacher Liang, shouldn't you go out and find some food? We're all starving, the class monitor said. Shen Yauka, looking pitiful, added, you are our only hope for survival. You can't rest anymore. If we don't freeze to death, we'll die of hunger. She fought to keep her emotions in check, reminding herself that as a teacher, she should not lose her temper with her students. Taking a deep breath, she struggled to stand up despite her exhaustion. What if the creature attacks while I'm gone? She asked them. Shen Yauka, frowning slightly, urged, that's why you must be quick this time and come back as soon as possible. The class monitor interjected, holding back Shen Yauka and speaking calmly. Teacher Liang, I have a plan. We will do our best to protect the other students. To himself, the class monitor harbored contempt for Liang Yu's self-sacrificing attitude. At this point, the teacher still wants to play the saint, protecting students. If it were me, I wouldn't care about the life or death of others. I could have all the school's stored food to myself, but it's also a blessing to have someone like her around. Otherwise, I might have died a long time ago. Shen Yauka pleaded with a desperate look. Teacher Liang, you're our only hope. Please save us. We'll starve without food. Liang Yu, supporting herself with her longsword, decided, then, I'll make a trip outside. Be careful on your own. Wu Chen Yu, the class monitor, had his own plans. Over the past month, he had observed the creature's behavior, toyed with its prey, and usually took only two or three students at a time. He had already selected a few expendable individuals to use as a diversion in case the creature attacked. As Liang Yu left the gymnasium, she was aware that the creature was likely nearby, waiting for an opportunity. She didn't venture far, determined to face the creature in a do-or-die battle. Today, either the creature or I will survive. If necessary, I'm prepared to sacrifice myself to take it down. Back in the gymnasium, Lu Karen continued to care for Yang Xingqin. Does your hand still hurt? Yang Xingqin looked at her only friend with gratitude. In this weather, I can hardly feel the pain. Lu Karen encouraged her with a resolute gaze. Believe that we can survive this. Don't give up hope. At this moment, another wave of mocking laughter came from behind. Really wishful thinking. Do you think you'll always be this lucky? I really don't see any point in you being disabled, living. If I were you, I would have ended it all by myself by now. Yet you're still here, disgusting everyone else. The other students also join in with their cold and hot mockery. You're just a burden, persisting like this. The next time the monster appears, it will be your end. Yang Xingxin remained silent. She was a girl not adept at arguing, except maybe online. Lu Karen couldn't stand it anymore and wanted to speak up for Yang Xingxin. But just as she looked up, she saw a huge shadow suddenly appear outside the window. She suddenly stood up and, pushing Yang Xingxin, yelled, run fast. At the same time, a large claw broke through the window, reaching in wildly. Wu Qingyu and others, although frightened, had already planned for this. He had rallied a few physically stronger classmates, grabbing a few unlucky ones to push towards the monster. The pushed students were instantly squashed into a pulp with a plop. The students were terrified and fled in panic. Outside the gymnasium, the monster had not noticed Liang Yu behind it. Liang Yu's eyes were sharp, and she held a long sword in her hand, charging fiercely towards the monster. By the time the big cat reacted, it was already too late. With a swoosh, a blade light harshly slashed across the big cat's neck. The big cat let out a piercing scream. The students, watching this scene, were too scared to move. They could do nothing but run behind teacher Liang, loudly cheering her on and encouraging her. Liang Yu also firmly blocked the entrance to the gymnasium, not giving the monster a chance to approach. Just then, Zhang Yi and others arrived at the entrance, following the noise. Their appearance caught the attention of both the person and the monster. Liang Yu's eyes suddenly lit up with hope. These are all strangers. They must have come from outside to rescue us. Thinking this, Liang Yu shouted, Quick, come over and help. Upon seeing a young and beautiful woman, Chun Lei was about to make a move, but her hand was held back by Zhang Yi. Zhang Yi watched the woman intently, realizing her exceptional combat skills. Such sharp swordsmanship was not something an ordinary person could achieve. She must be a powerful individual with special abilities. It was unclear whether she was a friend or foe. Most importantly, their goal was to find people, and there was no need to get involved in unrelated battles. The big cat was no good creature, and acting rashly could put all three of them at risk. Let's not meddle in others' affairs for now. Our priority is to find people. This woman seems capable enough to handle herself. Uncle Yu also noticed the situation, thinking that this woman could probably beat him too. Her swordsmanship looked painful even to watch. It was better to stay away from this woman. The three of them turned a blind eye and left directly. Liang Yu was speechless. They were all human.
humans, so why wouldn't they help fight the monster together? She angrily shouted, aren't you guys men? But the three continued to ignore her. Soon, with a bang, Uncle Yu kicked open the gymnasium door. The students screamed at first, but upon seeing three humans, they felt much more relieved. Zhang Yi quickly spotted the girl in the wheelchair. Good thing we arrived in time, or it would have been a wasted effort. Just then, Wu Ching Yu approached them. Are you from West Mountain Base? Did my father send you to pick me up? What is West Mountain Base? Zhang Yi heard this for the first time. Wu Ching Yu said, my father is Wu Jiangwo, the leader of Heavenly Sea City. You must be familiar with this name. Zhang Yi scoffed, never heard of it. He found the young man in front of him somewhat amusing. Although his clothes were expensive, he clearly hadn't bathed or changed clothes in two months, looking no different from a street beggar, yet still trying to act like a young master. The contrast was quite amusing, but Zhang Yi wanted to gather some information about West Mountain Base, a place he had heard about from Wang Siming and Su Hao. So, he asked, what do you know about West Mountain Organization? Tell us about it. Wu Qingyu was a bit taken aback. Are you from another shelter? Then he mused to himself, West Mountain Base is the closest to the school, so why did they send you? Hearing this, Zhang Yi became interested. He was aware that Heavenly Sea City had several emergency shelters, but clearly, they were not the ones Wu Qingyu mentioned. Recalling that Wang Siming had also mentioned something similar, Zhang Yi thought that there must indeed be higher level shelters in Heavenly Sea City, and not just one. Deciding to play along to see how much information he could get from Wu Qingyu, Zhang Yi casually asked, What do you know about the shelters? Wu Qingyu, not as naive as he seemed, immediately sensed something was off and waved his hand, saying, Been studying in this closed off school. When the snow disaster first started, I didn't think it would be this serious, or else I would have gone there earlier. Observing Wu Qingyu, who looked more like a beggar than a rich young master, Zhang Yi thought that he probably didn't have any valuable information. After all, he had been trapped there for so long. If there was a way to contact the outside world, his influential father would have rescued him by now. Seeing Wu Qingyu as no longer valuable, Zhang Yi ignored him and approached Yang Xinxin. The other students, seeing that Zhang Yi and his companions didn't seem like bad people, gathered around them, eagerly proposing offers. If you take me out, I can give you as much money as you want. My dad is the chairman of Chongming Group. I can even get my dad to arrange an official position for you, they said. Chun Lei and Uncle Yu looked embarrassed amidst these energetic young men and women. They felt somewhat reluctant to hurt these youths' feelings. Even a girl approached Uncle Yu, asking, do you have a partner? If your wife doesn't mind, I am willing to be the third party. However, they did not dare to speak as the decision lay with Zhang Yi. When Zhang Yi reached Yang Xinxin and confirmed her identity, he prepared to take her away. But Yang Xinxin stopped him, asking, can you do me a favor? Zhang Yi smiled gently and said, sure, as long as it's not something like saving your entire class. Yang Xinxin looked towards the corridor outside the gymnasium. Can you please stop them from continuing to fight? I'm worried it might be dangerous. Zhang Yi immediately sensed the underlying meaning. Just to stop them? Why not ask me to help your teacher? But Zhang Yi didn't want to probe further. After all, he would need her to help maintain cybersecurity in the future, and this was a good opportunity to earn her favor. He then gestured for Chun Lei and Uncle Yu to come over, and the three of them headed towards the outside of the gymnasium. At that moment, Liang Yi was fiercely battling with the big cat, with the cat's fur scattered all over the ground. Zhang Yi casually collected a few strands into his alternate space, thinking they might be worth studying later. He then gave Chun Lei a look, and he instantly understood, using his ice and snow abilities. A giant crack suddenly appeared above the corridor. In the next second, a massive collapse of ice and snow occurred, separating the person and the cat. The big cat vanished in an instant. Liang Yu, shaking with anger, turned and glared at Zhang Yi and Chun Lei, shouting, What are you doing? Chun Lei, frightened, quickly hid behind Zhang Yi, who casually replied, You don't need to thank me. It's only natural for humans to help each other. Liang Yu raised her long sword in fury. Why did you do that? I was about to subdue that monster. Why did you save it? She had been burning her physical energy for this final battle, ready to fight the big cat to the death. Now, she was furious at Zhang Yi. Zhang Yi appeared innocent. We wanted to help you, afraid that the monster might hurt you. Pointing at Yang Xinxin, he added, It was your student who asked me to intervene. Otherwise, do you think I would bother? As he turned to push Yang Xinxin, Liang Yu, unable to contain her anger, shouted for him to stop and, like lightning, swung her long sword towards him. Zhang Yi, seeing her murderous intent and feeling his safety threatened, knew he had to retaliate, regardless of the reason. He instantly drew his golden desert eagle. The gun's massive recoil made him step back. But what happened next stunned him. Liang Yu, with a swing of her long sword, created a fan-shaped afterimage, splitting the bullet in two. Zhang Yi was astonished. How is that possible? She split the bullet with her bare hands. But Liang Yu continued her relentless assault, swiftly moving towards Zhang Yi with her sword. Zhang Yi's mouth curved into a strange arc. Now, he quickly opened a dimensional gate in front of him. Liang Yu, realizing the danger too late, vanished into the gate. The massive inertia knocked Zhang Yi over. Chun Lei and Uncle Yu moved to help him, but Zhang Yi gestured for them to keep their distance. After about two seconds of having Liang Yu in the alternate space, Zhang Yi quickly reopened the dimensional gate to release her. Liang Yu lay on the ground, weakened, as time in the alternate space nearly stops, and staying there too 
Long can be lethal. There was no need to be so ruthless in front of Yang Xinqin. Zhang Yi spread his hands with a hint of frustration. Why are you always so fierce? I tried to help you out of goodwill, and you treat it like an ungrateful act. Picking up Liang Yu's long sword lying nearby, he joked, to prevent any more trouble from you, I better keep this dangerous thing for now. Holding the long sword, he mused that it must be an extraordinary weapon, capable of splitting bullets, and thought it might be useful for cutting vegetables back at the shelter. Liang Yu struggled to get up, demanding, give me back my dragon's roar. Zhang Yi turned to the crowd and waved, can a few of you help your teacher to rest in the corner? Liang Yu, weak and powerless, was helped to a corner, continuing to utter threats feebly. Who exactly are